Greetings, calling all women. On behalf of the Women's Auxiliary, we are so excited. We invite you to the Intergenerational Social. Join us for scripture, prayer, fellowship, and games. There's a special call for millennials. God is within her. She will not fall. This will take place Friday, November 20th at 7 p.m. Virtually via Zoom. We hope to see you there. Pastor Cash and church family. I am Skylar Franklin and I'm currently away attending Capital University in Columbus and majoring in music technology and minoring in film. Today is Youth Sunday and our 64th Sunday School homecoming celebration this year led by our junior department, Jane Gaston, Superintendent Carrie Reeves, Superintendent Inez Edwards and Luisa Grills, instructors, and Darlene Doxy Williams, the Sunday School General Superintendent. This year's theme, Virtual Reunion 2020. We are family. Let's get started. scripture reading for today but if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord choose for yourselves today 
which will you worship? The gods your fathers worship beyond the Euphrates River or the gods of the Amorites? In whose land are you living? As for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. My name is Tavon Austin, and this is prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for sending your only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins. Lord Jesus, I pray for the, for the sick and the shutting. Lord Jesus, your word is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you continue to bless us all. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. is Journey Marie Barkley. I represent five generations at East Mount Zion Baptist Church. My dad, Jeremy Barkley, my grandmother, Darling Doxy Williams, my great-grandmother, Malva Doxy, my great-great-grandparents, Deacon Allen and Deacon S. Thiesa Tubbs. Thank you. First, give an honor to God. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Brian Cash, the ministerial staff, church officials, and the entire East Mount Zion family, we say good morning. God bless you and welcome. We're delighted that you have chosen to tune in to our streamed worship service today. We will also be celebrating our 64th homecoming. East Mount Zion is committed to building the kingdom of God through spreading the love of Christ to all generations. It's our sincere prayer that you will be encouraged and inspired by the word of God delivered by our pastor Reverend Brian Cash. Again, welcome. Good morning. I am Darlene Doxy Williams, General Superintendent of Sunday School Department. I would like to thank the Junior Department for this homecoming celebration. Coordinated by Sister Loretha Grills, Assistant General Superintendent. For also Superintendent Jane Gaston, Assistant Carrie A.R. Reeves, and Sister Inez Edwards. Also, I would like to remind you of our two living Emeritus General Superintendents, Sister Eloise B. Hawthorne and Deacon Benny Beard. Our purpose for homecoming. Each year, a worship service, our annual homecoming is held. This celebration is organized by East Mount Zion Sunday School Ministry, which is the teaching arm of the church. Today we celebrate our Sunday School 64th anniversary and our church's 112th year in history and are coming from East 103rd Street and Cedar in November 1955 to this present location at 9990 Euclid Avenue. At this time the church was under the pastorate of the late William N. Downs. What a blessing from God. East Mount Zion was without a shepherd for more than a year in 1976 and part of 1977. Then God sent Reverend Dr. A. Charles Bowie, who led us to achieve total unity in the body of Christ from January 1978 until his retirement in April 5th, 2019. On January 1st, East Mount Zion of January 1st of this year, 2020, East Mount Zion transitioned into a, the next season of ministry and service on behalf of the Lord God Almighty by calling Pastor Brian A. Cash as our new pastor. Pastor Cash began his stewardship at East Mount Zion February 7th, 2020. Homecoming truly reminds us that we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, and reminds us we are family. With this annual homecoming celebration, 
as current and former members and friends come together, we honor history, the history of our church and the Sunday school. Always glorifying God, we celebrate who we are, children of God. We carry forward a legacy built on one foundation, on Christ, the solid rock we stand. With Jesus as our master teacher, we endeavor to meet students where they are and to teach to change lives. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Pam Anawa, and I'm the president of the East Mount Zion Women's Auxiliary. This morning, we are here at the Go To Church Laundry Mat to share, to partnership, to come out and and um, talk and to help, um, to reach out to um, help um, the customers here at the laundry mat by. Um, paying for their washing or purchasing their detergent. We just come out uh, from the church to reach out to let them know that we love them. We call it love at the laundromat. So that's why we're here just to share, just to reach out, just to talk to them, just to encourage them, to let them know that Jesus loves them. And, and by that, uh, we're just coming just to do whatever we can um, to encourage uh, uh, the customers here today. We're excited about it. We've been. Um, this is our second. This is our second time coming to um, the laundry uh, laundry mat this morning. So we really um, are pleased and thankful to be here because we was very well received the last time that we was here. So we just thank God and praise God for the opportunity to be here this morning, to reach out, to share, to partner, and just most of all, to tell them, to talk to them about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Hey everyone, this is Pastor Brian Cash, and guess where I am again? I am back here in Church Square. I remember as a kid growing up coming to Church Square every week to go to the grocery store, to the barber shop, to Pizza Hut, and uh, to get our movies from Blockbuster. And yet again, the Lord has brought us back here to Church Square to another area, to another space at the laundromat, at Go To Church Laundromat. And it is the work of our women's auxiliary led by uh, Mrs. Pam Anawa, who continues to do the work of going outward into the community. And I am so grateful that God has allowed us to do this work. And uh, we are back here this week and I'm encouraging our ladies as they are going to be working with those who are inside of the laundromat, paying for their laundry, making sure uh, that today we pay it forward and today we share kindness. And this is the key word, share love. Uh, because that's what God has called us to do. We are here out here uh, in this weather today just to share love to someone else because sharing love is the key element to building the kingdom of God. And so you hear all of the cars and you hear all of the things happening around us. People are moving and people are going. Um, but that's what God has called us to do. We are going to church. We're in church right now. We at go to church laundry mat. And so we are grateful for that and grateful for the work of the ministry, grateful for all of our ministries that are continuing to do the work. Um, our Sunday school ministry, our um, women's auxiliary, uh, our deacons ministry, every, everybody is doing just so wonderful work because we recognize that this is the season to be outward focused and not inward focused. And so at this moment right now, I want to invite those of you who are watching us to become partners of East Mount Zion Baptist Church. You want to be able to give and sow a seed into a ministry that's actually doing the work because that's what God has called us to do. We are doing more of this um, because of the work and the partnership that you have joined in with us. Last week, we talked about partnership in the gospel. And so I ask right now for those of you, this is our giving moment. Those of you who desire to partner with East Mount Zion Baptist Church and give to our church so that so that the work of the kingdom continue to cont can continue to spread and can continue to go forward. And so right now there's many options for you to be able to give uh, to the East Mount Zion Baptist Church and you'll be able to sow a seed into this ministry and you'll be able to share in the partnership, in the work of of the kingdom of God. You can text EMZBC to the number 77977 and be able to share a gift to our church. You can also drop by our church. There is a drop box outside of the Susie Lee Lounge for you to be able to share a gift there, or you can mail a gift. The address is on the screen. I just want to give you an opportunity to partner with East Mount Zion Baptist Church as we share in the kingdom of God. Let me pray for you right now. God, we thank you for those who have uh, come together.
together to sow a seed into the ministry as we begin to sow a seed into the lives of those who are in this space today. Bless the efforts of our women's auxiliary. Bless them as they grow and bless all of our efforts as we continue to support and partner with this community. Thank you that we are growing in you and becoming a better church because of you. It's in your name that we pray. Every child of God said, amen. Thank you all so much for your gifts and thank you all so much for doing the work that you continue to do. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. It is, it is just a beautiful opportunity now for East Mount Zion in the midst of all of the craziness that has been happening this year to be able to assemble together around the dedication of this beautiful baby, Sage Christie. Amen. I want to read Psalm 127, verse 3 through 5. It says this, children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in the court. Now, usually when we have baby dedications, it's usually a full room of people to show that it takes a village to raise a child. And that it's a community of people that stands behind you. But the reason why I wanted this to be on recording is to let you all know that we all are standing behind you. And that whatever you all need in the raising of your beautiful daughter, to make sure that she becomes who not only you want her to be, but who God has destined her to be. My wife and our deacons and this beautiful family is here standing behind you. But it only symbolizes also that it's not us that makes her who God wants her to be, but it is God who is directing her steps. It's God that's directing every step that you all make from here on out as she turns one and two and then comes all the way to 18. From that process, it's God that's going to be working with you. And the whole piece of dedication is, is now that as you dedicate her to him, you're not only dedicating her to him, but you're dedicating you all to him. And you're saying, God, I can't raise her ourselves because we don't really know what it takes to raise her to be who you want her, him, her, to, him to, her to be. But the reality is, is that God is going to guide every step. God is going to give you every provision. God is going to do everything you need him to do. And this moment today, are you saying to God, I'm giving her to you because you gave her to us. And so this family, we, we stand with you and we in prayer. And now let us go to God in prayer as we dedicate Sage back to God. Gracious and kind God, we come to you, come to you during a difficult season of COVID-19 that has caused us to be disconnected from everyone. During a season where it's difficult to even do the various different things that we want to do, but God, you've given us a beautiful moment, a moment of new life, of no, a moment of new possibilities, a, a moment of new potential, in this beautiful life of sage. That word sage speaks to wisdom. It speaks to great understanding. It speaks to also a heritage of others who have come before us. And so God, because you have already charted the course for sage, you've already made ways for her to become who you desire for her to be, we now not only dedicate her to you, we also dedicate her father to you. We also dedicate her mother to you. We also dedicate this family to you because God, they cannot do this without you. God, as we stand beside her and behind her and an entire community of people that stand with her in the virtual world, we all dedicate ourselves to you because in order for us to be able to lead her and the more and all the other children that are about to come to our church and our community, we need you. We cannot do this without you. And so, Lord, we 
This morning, dedicate our lives, our hands to you, our feet to you, ourselves to you. And God, we pray for this child this morning that God, you would wrap your loving arms around her and let her feel you in the ways that she needs to feel you. And as she comes to age to make that decision to join into the family of God, we pray, oh God, that you will reveal yourself to her that her family will begin to have everything they need to lead her closer to you. We give you thanks for this new reality, this new possibility. And God, we pray against any attack of the enemy right now. It comes against this family. We pray, oh God, that you would guard them with everything they need to be able to be on guard as the enemy comes in to try to dismantle this family. But God, they are stronger than that. Bless this grandmother, bless the siblings, bless everyone who assembled in here today, the grandfather, everybody who's here this morning, we pray that you would strengthen them so that this family could be even stronger. We pray that they're stronger, oh God, than they've ever been because Sage is gonna need a strong family. They're gonna need a family that's together and praying together and staying together because she's gonna need that image. But God, because this morning we've dedicated our lives to you, we won't have to worry about that. Because God, we know you're leading us. You're guiding us in every way. We give you thanks and we give you praise. It's in your name that we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Brothers and sisters, continue to pray for this family and continue to lift them up because God has a special plan for this beautiful daughter called Sage. Amen. If you give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. What East Mount Zion means to me. My name is Yvonne Yates. East Mount Zion is where I accepted Christ in 1957 and was baptized by Reverend Downs. East Mount Zion is where Christian principles were enhanced as I matured to adulthood. East Mount Zion is where God blessed my heart and my family's heart when my daughter Sonia accepted Christ and was baptized by Reverend Bowie. More recently, one of my joys, my granddaughter, Rice, accepted Christ and was baptized by Minister Gaston. East Mount Zion is when Pastor Bowie encouraged me as an adult to return to Sunday school, and I remain there today. Pastor Bowie also connected me to the Floral Gill where my sisters and I still beautify God's house. East Mount Zion has taught me to witness under Minister Anawa's leadership, where I work alongside other dedicated Christians to plant seeds of salvation and pray souls may be saved. Today, I am still digging deeper under the leadership of Reverend Cash who emerges us in God's word while teaching us new technology. To God be the glory, East Mount Zion is my life anchor. And I thank my mother for bringing my siblings and I to East Mount Zion so many years ago. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sonia, and this is my daughter. Bryce, and I'm eight years old, and what East Mount Zion Baptist Church means to me, it is special because that's the place that I got baptized at. It is also special to me because it is where I was also baptized at. East Mount Zion will always hold a special place in my heart. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. God bless you, my East Mount Zion Baptist Church family. What a blessing it is to be a part of the 64th, wow, 64th annual homecoming celebration activities. To the senior pastor, um, Pastor Brian Cash and First Lady Krista Cash, I greet you in the joy of Jesus. And I am excited to answer this question, what East Mount Zion means to me? Well, gosh, as a part of the Brown family, it means foundation. East Mount Zion is where I got my Christian foundation through 
church school or Sunday school, uh, learning scriptures, uh, finding the foundation of what it means to be someone who loves Jesus Christ and follows Jesus Christ. It is where I sang in the youth choir, learning how to praise God. Absolutely loved uh, watching and learning and being a part of learning the Handel's Messiah during Christmas. Um, it is just where um, youth of distinction, oh my gosh, and so many memories. It was my foundation. And it means family to me, not just because that's where my family was, where my grandfather, um, Deacon Elijah Brown, and my grandmother, Lula Mae Brown, was. It was absolutely all of the families that became a part of my family, the people that I grew up with, friends. And I just am grateful because you can make it in this life if you have a foundation in Christ, which I got from East Mount Zion, and when you have family. So I'm praying God's richest blessings as you continue to celebrate this homecoming and know that the best is still yet to come for our East Mount Zion. God bless you. Hello, we're the Cobbs. Miles and Carla. I'm Carla. He's Miles. Take it away, Miles. <laughs> what East Mount Zion means to me. East Mount Zion has been a strong force in my life since I was a young child. My parents brought me to East Mount Zion as a baby when it was located at 100 in Cedar. We later moved to the current location, 100th in Euclid. I accepted Christ at age 10 and was baptized by the late William M. Downs in 1957. East Mount Zion has been a sustaining lifeline to me as I grew up through the teen years, school, and into the competitive world. The lessons learned at East Mount Zion have followed me all my life. And to all of the Sunday school teachers, Reverend Roland H. Crowder, Sister Josie Wright, Brother Charles Carter, Sister Ernestine Flemings of Group 16 and Sister Sarah Daniels of Group 10. Sister Cornelia Lowe of the Ursha, Junior Ursha Board and Brother German Thompson. They all provided me with the guidance that has brought me through East Mount Zion from the Cradle Roll Department in the Sunday School to the Chairman of the Trustee Board. The fond memories of East Mount Zion and all the wonderful members will linger with me all of my life. And now a word from my wife, Carla. I like that, Miles. The fond memories of East Mount Zion and all of the wonderful members will linger with me also for the rest of my life. It has also made me the woman that I am. I am thankful that my parents also brought me to East Mount Zion as a baby. So, from the cradle roll to the pew is what I like to say. There are fond memories of me uh, kind of crawling around on the floor at, to my mother's displeasure, but I was in church. Church is my community and it was definitely my family. And I, I will tell more about that later. Historically, the African-American church has played a large part in black families. It has been a place to read, to learn to read. It is a place of entertainment. It is a place to learn appropriate dress. It is a place where we learned compassion. It was a place where we learned to sing. It was a place where we practiced manners. It was a place where we learned communication skills. We learned how to speak in public and we learned and practiced giving. Also uh, in our history, it is, has been a very, very part of the civil rights mu movement. All of this happened at East Mount Zion. I am thankful that not only that, I learned some etiquette skills on how to dress and how to be a lady. And 
I learned some skills of marriage, how to love and how to be loving. I'm still working on it, but in Sunday school we did. We practiced reading our lessons, so that was the importance of that. Um, teachers would have us to read from our, our Sunday school books. We would practice talking with each other, so we were communicating. These things are truly missing in our society today. Um, we've become very, very dependent on what is important, and we've kind of lost focus. We have become dependent upon our cell phones, and they are a great help. We're recording this video on one now. Anywho, um, the usher board, I was a member of the junior choir. That was my singing. I still don't sing well, but I practiced the usher board. Um, they believed enough in me that they elected me as vice president, first vice president under Brother Thomas Smith Stith, and under Sister Mary Cameron. Um, again, I learned skills. Um, Sister Lolia Hope um, imparted in me and gifted me the chairmanship of the A William M. Downs Aid to Education program. And then the church saw fit to practice what skills that my parents had paid for and elected me also to serve. And where I got the chance to be in companionship with my hubby on the trustee board. Again, practicing life long skills. We have moved to Arizona, but East Mount Zion is still very, very much a part of our lives. We try to keep in contact with very various ones, and we're very thankful to Sister Darlene Doxy, to Trustee Ingrid Blaylock, hey Ingrid, oh, and, um, and others. And so, as we have fellowshiped with a new church here in Arizona, it has continued to play a large part in our lives. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you, East Mount Zion. We love you. <laughs> hey. hey, what's up, East, East Mount Zion? Zion? I'm Chucky. And I'm Sonia Shepherd Webb. And, uh,. It's just an honor and a privilege to be able to sit here, wow, I don't know how many years later and and able to make a video and say hi to everybody out there in the EMZ. EMZ land. Yeah. So we were asked, what does East Mount Zion mean to us? Of course, it's a foundation. It's where we came almost every Sunday um because mommy made us vacation bible school <laughs> so we've done it all we've done the choir i was an usher were you an usher never mind so anyway he was in the choir <laughs> we did all the youth activities um it's like i said it's our foundation we've met some really great people <laughs> we're still friends with those people our salvation was there our rock is there what else chuck foundation uh it was just a refuge it was a place to go and and have a different set of friends right that we still have that right? we still have i love uh coming home and, and 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 it's like we never left and the stories and uh, the memories some of the things people say about me that i forgot because <laughs> i was um, a little angel yes yes uh, no. Little halo. Do y'all see the halo behind me? <laughs> so listen, you know, when we were younger, we went to um, the nursery up those steps. And I believe that's why I love Ritz crackers, but I do not like red punch. And that may be why, because we had it every single Sunday. Yes, we drunk the Kool-Aid. Yeah, literally. <laughs> so anyway... We're thankful for our East Mount Zion family. We're thankful that that is the place where, you know, Pastor Bowie baptized us and we met God. 1978. 
and we're still, still on the battlefield doing great things for God, doing great things for God and representing our families. So we love you, East Mount Zion. We're so proud of Pastor Cash and his beautiful wife, and we can't wait to get back there. <laughs> you listen to the song in the background? <laughs> hey, we got to go ahead and cut this off right here because we got easy E on right now. Wow. <laughs> oh, let's cut it off. <laughs> See y'all. Get it, get we it. love you. <laughs> Wait, where's the button? I don't know. Stop oh it. Oh my God. Is this it? Yeah. Hit it. All right. Love y'all. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>
that we don't need to fight among each other, but we need to be working in step with each other. We need to be working in cycle with each other, not crossing each other. And then we need to reimagine our partnership with community. That God is calling us to reimagine how we partner with the folk who are outside of these walls. God wants us to have a better relationship with people who we generally don't have a good relationship with. The people that we have become disconnected with, we want them to know that we are here sharing love to them. We are here so that they can grow in their faith as we grow in our faith and we all grow together. And so that's partnership. But this morning, I'm so excited that the Lord has been wrestling with me about this text today found in Ephesians chapter one, verse number 15. Would you go with me this morning? I'm going to ask that you have your Bible because we're going to be going through several different scriptures to illustrate what this next step of growth requires of us. First, it's in Ephesians chapter one, verse number 15 says, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power. For who us, for who, for us who believe and his incomparably great power for us who believe. This morning, I want to share on this sermon as we continue in this uh, next stage of conversation in regards to better church. The sermon series this morning is growing in the wisdom of God. Growing in the wisdom of God. What is the wisdom of God? Right? What, what is the wisdom of God? And that's what we'll have a conversation around tonight or today. The wisdom of God. Well, wisdom uh, is something that we believe connects to experience. Right. We say you are wise because you've been on this job for 30 years and I could come to you because you have wisdom. We attach wisdom to known knowledge. It is really the applied knowledge that I have now received all of this knowledge from this source or knowledge from this university or knowledge from this job. And now I need to figure out how do I apply this knowledge to my life? It is applied knowledge. We Say that you can have all the wisdom in the world, but if all the knowledge in the world, if you but if you do not know how to apply that knowledge, then uh, that knowledge is wasted because wisdom speaks to how I take the stuff that I have learned and I apply it to my life. That's what ordinary idea of wisdom is. But Paul speaks in the book of Ephesians, and he says, it is my prayer, church, that you grow in the spirit of the wisdom of God. Is Paul talking about the regular type of wisdom that we learn? A wisdom that says that after 30 years of, of experience, now I'm so wise that everybody can come to me and gain wisdom. Is Paul asking that the church grows in this kind of wisdom that we have come to know? Well, actually, I want to suggest to you that Paul is actually not talking about the wisdom that we have come to know. Paul is talking about a different type of wisdom. And I really want you to understand what this wisdom is, and it will guide our conversations to where we want to go. Would you go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 18 says this, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. 
For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intellect. I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of the age? Has not God made the foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Now go with me to verse 30. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness and redemption. I, I want to read verse 30 again so you can get this. It is because of him that you were called in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Now, many of us think wisdom is about us, right? I am smart and I am wise. But God, Paul says wisdom in terms of wisdom of God is has nothing to do with you, but it has everything to do with Jesus Christ. I, I want to really bring this to you on the forefront. What really Paul is saying is, is that the more you grow in Christ, the more you realize you're not smart at all. And I need to stay closer to Christ so that Christ can direct my life so that I can be as effective in every area that I need to be. Paul wants you to understand and wanted this Ephesian church to understand that although you are a part of the family of God, although you have joined in partnership with God, although you are learning about the knowledge of God, you will never be able to go further in your Christian walk if you do not grow in the wisdom of God and the wisdom of God is disclosed in Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul says, children of God, yes, you might have joined the church. Yes, you might be a part of the church. Yes, you might be a part of a Sunday school class. But if your motivation is not to grow further in Jesus Christ, you will not gain the wisdom that God has for you. Can I suggest to you, children of God, that's what God desires for us to do. That as we are in the word of God, as we are in the family of God, God desires for us to not simply grow in the church, but he is desiring for us to grow in Jesus Christ. Because what Jesus Christ does for us is he gives us everything that God wants to give, give to us. But what he does is he packages all of that stuff in Jesus and displays it and shares it through the Holy Spirit. Can I suggest to you, children of God, the reality is, is God is calling the church to not simply grow even more in church rituals or church politics, but God is calling us to grow even more in Jesus Christ because everything about Jesus is everything God wants us to be. I've realized that many of us have gone further away from where God desires for us to be because we are not growing in Jesus Christ. Paul really wants the Ephesian church to know this, that if you're going to become better, if you're going to become stronger, it is a it is a reaction or a response as a result of how you grow in Christ. That's very important because what Paul wants them to understand is, is Christ has everything you need in order for you to be strong in the Christian faith. Christ
Christ has left the Holy Spirit here to be able to provide you the necessary things for you to be able to make it from day to day. But if you do not grow in him, you will just be on level one and never make it to the levels that the Lord wants you to make it to. It's really, really not about our wisdom. It's really not about our understanding. It's really not about how smart we are. But what Christ helps us understand is, is that you're really not smart at all. You really don't have it all together. But if you make the initiative to grow further and further in me, what I'll do is provide you everything that the Father wants to give to you. Paul, Paul prays. He prays for this church at Ephesus because Paul wants them to grow in God. Now, 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 the church at Ephesus is important because these are not a bunch of Jews. These are a group of Gentiles who don't know much about church, don't know much about rituals, don't know much about singing hymns. They don't know much about uh, what church really is all about. They have been outside of church and now they have joined the family of God and now they need to know how do I get closer to this God that I've been hearing about. And Paul does not say you need to be circumcised. He does not say you need to join the choir. He does not say you need to join this ministry. Paul says my prayer is simple for the, for the, for the church at Ephesus. My prayer is simple for you who are new converts in the family of God. It's simple. I want you to grow in the wisdom of God. And the only way you grow in the wisdom of God is by growing in Jesus Christ. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. You might be just like this church who has just joined in uh, to the family of God. You might be a person who does not have the religious rhetoric. You might be a person that cannot quote amazing grace. How sweet the song. You might be a person that does not know John 3.16. You might be a person that has just joined into the family of God. And what Paul said is you do not have to have all of the right language. You do not have to have all of the right talk. You do not have to have all of the right hymns. What you do have to have is a strong connection to the life and the mission and the voice of Christ. And what Christ will do for you is Christ will help you get connected to the Father in ways you have never been connected to, to uh, before because connection to the Father gives you things you've never experienced before. Connection to the Father allows you uh, to be able to experience the lavish blessings that God has for you. Connection to the Father allows you to go through things in your life and you think that it's going to be impossible but because the Son is connecting you to the Father through the work of the Holy Spirit, you're able to make it through. Why? Because you understand that I'm connected to something and someone that has power that is greater than mine. Paul, Paul, Paul says, listen, my prayer is, my prayer is simple, not that you grow in your own wisdom, not that you grow in the wisdom of, of people before because other folk are going to try to tell you you need to uh, be circumcised. Other folk are going to try to tell you you need to do this and you need to do that. But this is what I'm telling you. You don't have to do any of that. What I want you to do is grow in his wisdom. And the only way you can grow in his wisdom is simple. You got to be connected to Jesus Christ. And, and, and the benefit of being connected to Jesus Christ is Christ, uh, yeah, reveals some things to you that allows you to have a relationship with the Father that you've never had before. And so the question that I really want to examine is, how does Christ, 
or connecting to Christ in this wisdom component? How does my connection to the wisdom of God through Christ make me better? And then maybe may, but you're asking that. You're saying to me, well, uh, how, how is my connection to Christ going to make me better in my relationship with God? I, I've already given my life to Christ. I've already been here. I'm, I'm a part of the church. But you're telling me that I've got to be connected and grow in the wisdom of, of God, grow in the wisdom of God through Christ. How is this going to make me better? Well, several things that Paul examines to us. Number one, Paul says that when you grow, in the wisdom of God, the first thing that he does for us is that he helps us to know God better. The first thing that Christ does for us, he helps us to know God better. Paul understood that there were all kind of different images of God. Uh, that when the Gentiles joined the church, they joined the church where people were connected to God through ritual, but not personal relationship. When the Gentiles joined the church, Paul knew that the Gentiles were seeing these individuals only showing up to church to do sacrifices to God and pray three times a day out of ritual, but not out of relationship. And Paul understood that I do not want you to get caught up in having a relationship with God that was just mere on ritual. But I want you to have a relationship with God that is really predicated upon personal connection. Paul understood that these individuals might get caught up in, in figuring out what I need to do or what I need to say and how I need to act. And Paul says, what I want you to do is get connected to the wisdom of God through Christ because what Christ whole mission was is not for people to get lost in thinking God desires for them to do rituals to be connected to them, to net connected to him. But what Christ wanted them to understand is, is that his father was a personal God. His father was a personable father. That's why he uh, does this Lord's prayer by saying our Father who art in heaven. That word father means Abba, which means daddy. His whole purpose was to allow the people to see that God really wanted them not to be connected to him through some type of ritual, but actually personal relationship. So he did not want the Gentiles to be uh, convoluted in thinking that I had to do this to get connected to him and do that to be connected to him. And so what he says is what Jesus will do for you is Jesus will demonstrate that the God that you serve is not the God that requires you to do all of these things. But the God that you serve is a God that wants you to be close to him. But he also understood that as they came into this church, people would get into their head. People would start making them think that God wanted them to do this and God wanted them to do that. But he wanted them to understand that what Jesus does is Jesus will dismantle all of those things that people have put on God and Jesus will take away those type of weights that people have put on you and he will eliminate those things so that you can have easy access to God. Now, I, I want Reverend Curry and Reverend Hosea to come and so I can really clearly illustrate this thing in what Jesus does in having us have a close connection to God. You know, when you come into the family of God, people may put things on your mind and, and, and say you got to do this to get to God and you got to do that to get to God. And, and you're thinking maybe God does not love me because I'm not good enough. And maybe God does not want me because I, I can't sing like that. Or maybe God does not want me to be around because my family doesn't have these things. My family doesn't do these things. And so in your mind, you stop pursuing 
pursuing after God. In your mind, you stop getting close to God because you start thinking, if God does not love me and I keep making all of these mistakes, but this is what Paul said, this is what Paul said Jesus would do as you grow in, into uh, uh, with the wisdom of God. Jesus will start pulling that stuff off because what happens in your life is you start adding weight and you start adding these things. I'm, I'm sinning and I'm, I'm not good and God doesn't love me and so you're trying to get to God but you've got weight on you and all of those weights that is hindering you from getting to God and I'm trying to climb up here to get to him but my weights are too heavy because of preconceived notions about who God is and God is too big and God is too far away and God doesn't love the homosexual and God doesn't love this sinner and God so I, I got all of this weight on me and it's keeping me from getting to God but you know what happens when you get close Close to Jesus, what Jesus will do is, you get close to Jesus, Jesus will take that weight off of you and and, and you'll now be uh, uh, less, you'll be now free because now you realize, I don't need all of that. I, I can get to, I can get to the Father easily because the Son has released the weight from me and the Son takes that weight and he puts that on the cross and now I I'm not, I, I, I have an easy access. And that's why Paul says in Hebrews 4 and 16 that now you can come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because the son has done what in Hebrews 12? He has convinced you to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets you. Can I suggest to you, as I talk to you a little bit, uh, you, I, I don't know what you are dealing with and I don't know what you are carrying but what God does through his son Jesus Christ he helps you to know the father better by stripping off the stuff that you allow other folk to put on you. God didn't say you couldn't come to him God didn't say you had to have it all right to be connected to him. God didn't say you had to have the right language and you had to have the right actions. No God says, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. God says, come boldly before the throne of grace, because I am the one that's receiving you. Paul says to the Gentile church, I pray. And I, and you know what he says? He says, doesn't, that doesn't just say, I care pray. Paul says, I keep on praying. I keep on praying because it is my prayer that you grow closer to Christ because Christ, Christ, you know what Christ's going to do? He's going to take that stuff off of you so that you can grow closer to the Father. But, but not only children of God does he say uh, that Christ helps you to know him better, but also Christ helps you to see better. Uh, let, let's, let's go back to this word. He says, not only, he says, listen to, he says, he says, the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that, so that you may know him better. But verse, verse 18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that in, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. I pray that the eyes of your heart uh, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which uh, he has called you. This is, this is what Paul says, number two, Christ will do. Christ is going to do this. Y'all can, can go now. Thank y'all so much, brother. These, these are some wonderful uh, help, aren't they? Christ says, he says, listen, this is what Christ will do. Not only will he help you know him better, but he'll help you see better. He says, what I'll do is, Christ will do, when you grow in his wisdom and all the things that God has disclosed in Christ, Christ will do this. He'll open up the eyes of your heart so that you are able to see the hope he has called you to. Now, now, now I want y'all to walk with me on that piece. 
He said, not only am I going to strip off this stuff so you can get to him and know him better, but then as you grow in him, Ephesians 3 says, he goes where? He goes into the heart of every person that is growing in him. But this is what he says, if you grow in him, he'll do. What he will do is he'll get in your heart and he'll put some spectacles on your heart, some glasses on your heart, some lenses on your heart, so that you are able to see the hope that you've been called to. Now, now I love this because there is a comparison analysis here, because usually I see through my eyes and I see everything through these eyes. I have pretty good vision. I got 20-20 vision in these eyes. But you know the dilemma with seeing from these eyes? When I see from these eyes, I only see reality. When I see from these eyes, I only see what is in front of me, right? So if I look at our building, I will see something that looks impossible to fix. If I look at your life and, and you have been broken and you have been hurt, I only see someone who is broken. I only see someone who cannot find help if I have sickness in my body. And the doctor tells me there is no way you're going to be healed. And if I look through my natural eyes, I'll only see something that's impossible. But notice what Paul says Jesus will do for you. Jesus will get in your heart. And he will open up your heart to be able to see the hope. That word hope means something that I'm expecting, something that I am anticipating. In other words, what Paul says Jesus will do for you as you grow in him, he'll get in your heart and he'll start cleaning that area out. He'll start cleaning that space out. And what he'll do is he'll clean a space out so much so that he will be able to guide you and let you see what you can't see on your own. Because out of your natural eye, you've been looking at impossibility. Out of your natural eye, you've been saying, oh, ain't no way I can do that. Out of your natural eye, you've been saying, there's no way I can go back to school and get this degree. Out of your natural eye, you've been saying, there's no way we'll be able to do this and do that. But if you grow in Jesus, what Jesus would do is he'll be able to help you see out of your spiritual eye. And where you see something as impossible, Jesus nudges you and say, don't you know there is nothing impossible with God? Where you see sickness and it's impossible to be healed, God, through Jesus and the Spirit nudges you and say, why are you doubting me when you know that I got healing even in the hymn of my God? When you see something as impossible and you start complaining and you start saying, God, there's no way we'll be able to do this. God, there's no way we'll be able to fix this building. God, there's no way we'll be able to restore this. God, there's no way we'll be able to do this. God comes to you as you've been growing in him. And he says, don't you remember reading your word this morning? And the word said that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell within it. God says if you grow in me I'll give you another set of glasses. I'll give you another set of lenses. Our problem is we're only looking out of our natural eyes. Instead of allowing Christ to come on within us so that he can help us to see out of the spiritual eyes. And when we see out of the spiritual eyes, he helps us to see that there is something bigger and there is something greater and that there is someone that is more powerful than us that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ever ask or think or imagine. Maybe the next time you look at something that is impossible, ask yourself, am I leaning on the wisdom of God that gives me a new set of lenses to look at? Next time, that's, that's something that is impossible 
impossible and that's something that is a roadblock that's something that comes into your life and it seems as though it has taken the life out of you and you start having a pity party and you start thinking that there's no way I'm going to press through this situation ask yourself am I leaning on my natural eyes or am I leaning on the new eyes that my savior gave to me next time someone says to you that you will never make it that you will never amount to anything and you start believing that report would you ask yourself am I listening and looking from my natural eyes or am I looking through the eyes that my savior gave to me have I cleared off the lens that my savior gave to me am I truly looking through the eyes of my heart or am I looking through the eyes of my natural self? And I want you to be encouraged that God is calling you to grow even more in Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is more than just a person hanging on the cross. Jesus Christ is more than a person that just got up from the grave, but actually Christ through the Holy Spirit lives within the heart of persons so that that heart can have new eyes and new vision. You can be able to see what is impossible. You'll be able to do what we're going to do next year. Imagine for the next year something that is greater than anything we've ever experienced. I'm asking you, what eyes are you looking through? Are you looking through the natural eyes? <laughs> or are you looking through the eyes of your heart? Not only does Christ, as we grow in him, help us to know God better, by relinquishing the very things that call, hinder us from moving closer to him. Not only does he help us see better, but let me tell you the last thing Christ will do for you if you grow in him. The last thing is he will help you believe better. Let's go back. He says this in Ephesians. He says, verse number one, verse 19, chapter one, verse 19. He says, not only will you know him better and you'll see better, but he says the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And I love this last part and his incomparable great power for us who believe. Let me tell you something about this power. The power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Paul says, what you do not know is, is that this Christ, who you are growing in, has something he calls incomparable power. Do you know what incomparable power is? It comes from this Greek word that means supreme power. It means power that is greater than any other power you can ever experience. Paul literally suggests, brothers and sisters, as you grow in Christ, you ain't just growing in anyone. You ain't just getting connected to anything or any person that you've been connected to before. This is not like just getting connected to the church. It is not like just getting connected to an organization or a, a fraternity or a sorority and you think I can get connected to this and it'll give me influence. No, you're getting connected to something that has incomparable. You, you know what incomparable power means? That means don't nothing compare to it. it. Incomparable power means that you can find your greatest power source, that you can go to uh, the electric company and, and see all of the power they have. That means you can go to the greatest power kingdom that ever lived and nothing compares to God's power. Notice what he said. He says, if you grow in Jesus Christ, <laughs> what you are growing into and connecting to is you're connecting to something that has power over everything. Scripture teaches us that our Savior has everything under his feet. Everything that you experience in the world today, every problem you go through, every situation you go through, every issue you go through, everything is under under his 
feet. And what Paul wanted the Gentile church to understand that I know you are just getting into this church. I know you are here and you are new to the body of Christ, but I want you to know what you are connected to. And if you know that his power is incomparable, that means you want to get connected even more to that power source. So, so when you go to work on Monday through Friday, it doesn't matter what comes against you. You ain't worried about it because you connected to something that got incomparable power. That means when you come against a financial situation and you don't know how you're going to pay the bills and you don't know how you're going to pay tuition or you, you don't know how you're going to deal with it, as you grow in Christ, you, you worry less. You are not worrying about it. Why? Because I'm connected to something that got incomparable power. How many of us walk through life with that freedom? How many of us walk through life with that, uh, with that mentality? How many of us can actually say that I do not worry about the stuff I'm facing because God and me is connected in such a way that he has revealed to me. Why are you worried about that? I'm the one that got that under my feet. But that takes growth. It requires you to grow in him daily. It requires you to grow in the wisdom of God daily. Why? Because what the wisdom of God will, realize, will teach you through the work and life of Jesus Christ that everything I'm facing, I don't have to worry. I can believe even better because the one I'm connected to is the one that has all power over everything I face. So I want to encourage you this morning to grow more in him. Every day, get up in the morning and grow more in him because some of the battles we had, we would not allow it to stress us out and worry as we do if we got connected to him in ways we've never been connected to him before. It is my prayer that I, even myself, get connected to the power source in ways I've never been connected to him before. Because there's going to be some demons and some, some oppositions and some problems that are going, I'm going to face that are larger than the problems and demons I've faced before. And I cannot go facing those demons and those problems and those mountains with the same faith I had yet last year. But I need to grow in him even more so that I can be assured to know that he is watching over me through this incomparable power. Let's pray. Gracious and kind God, we thank you for this moment that we've had to share with you. We pray now, God, that you would help us to grow even more in you, to grow even more in your wisdom, to grow even more in your knowledge so that we can be able to become better we can be able to become stronger. And there is nothing that we would face not realizing that God, you're the one walking beside us. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And thank you for what he means to us. And we pray, oh God, that you will continue to develop us and grow us in the way you desire for us to be. It's in your name that we pray. Every child of God said, Amen. Mm -hmm.
send this invitation to you. God is calling us to become better. He invited us to become partners on last Sunday. And in this Sunday, he's inviting us to grow in his wisdom, not ours. And the only way you can grow in his wisdom as shared in this sermon this morning is you have to grow in Christ. I'm extending an invitation to the out extended hands of our deacons as a representation that now is a great opportunity for you to grow in Christ. Because in Christ, you have all of the wisdom, all of the knowledge, everything you need to be successful in life. It happens in Christ. And so two invitations I send out this morning. One is that invitation of discipleship. What is the invitation of discipleship, preacher? That's simply, I want my life to be different. I have not been in church. I have not given my life fully to Jesus. I have not committed myself to the work of Christ. I have not invited Christ into my heart and said, Christ, take control. I might have been in church, but I have not had church inside of me. Church is the center of Christ. And so I invite you to now become a new disciple. Walk that pathway with Christ. Let, let Christ change your life in ways your life has never been changed before. The second invitation that I always extend is an invitation of new commitment. New commitment is this. You've been committed before. Now it's time to recommit. I don't know what has happened in between your last commitment and now. It doesn't matter. I'm asking you now to commit your life back to Christ. J jump back on the pathway of wisdom in him and allow him to change your life in ways it has never been changed before. Commit now to East Mount Zion Baptist Church as a partner with us in the gospel. Because there's so much room in the vineyard to share the gospel to so many different people. But you know the scripture, the laborers are few. Partner with us. Extend the laborers here at East Mount Zion so that we can share Christ with everyone. Help others to grow in faith as we grow in faith. And then at the end, we'll build the kingdom of God. That's all we really want to do. This is an invitation to you to join in with us on this morning. I want to pray with you right now. God, I pray for those who are watching us this morning on this homecoming Sunday. I pray that they would join back into the fellowship with you. Not simply the fellowship of this church, but the fellowship with you. That they would recognize today is the day to make that commitment to be a new disciple or to recommit my life back to the work of the kingdom. Sharing love and cultivating faith is what we desire. So I pray that you would touch someone's heart right now that you would help them to grow in you in a way they've never grown in you before. That is our desire. That is our mission, and I pray, oh God, that you would touch their heart right now in ways that has never been touched before. 
It's in your name that we pray. Every child of God said amen. Amen. We've had such a wonderful time today as we celebrated our homecoming Sunday school experience. Our uh, church has done such an amazing job, and it's so good to be able to see some of those things. Um, our, I want to salute again um, the work of our women's auxiliary. We were with them earlier uh, today as they gave out all kind of uh, coins so that people could wash their clothes this weekend. And so we thank God for love at the laundromat. God is just doing some amazing things. And I ask that you continue to support, you continue uh, to send out invitations for people to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that we can be stay connected and we can impact the kingdom of God in greater ways. Amen. Now it's time for our benediction. Now may the Lord bless you. Now may the Lord keep you. May his face ever shine upon you. May he lift up his continent to give you peace. May he bless you in your going in and your going out, in your rising and even in your falling. May the Lord be a blessing to all of you. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Everyone said amen. Bye.